Hi there, my name's Ann Van Oppen. This is the second video in the print collaboration between myself and Lisa Toth in New York State. Lisa's a relief printmaker and I'm an etcher. I make etchings on copper. Lisa sent the plates back to me. She's done five beautiful plates and I hope you can see them. She transferred her artwork onto the plate using Serol transfer paper and then drew into the plate with an etching needle breaking through the surface of the hard ground. So we have some gorgeous plates that we're going to etch. I should point out that I have covered the edges of the plates with whiteout. This is a great block to use in this process because the copper sulfate doesn't break through it at all. And now I'm going to explain what I do. This is the copper sulfate solution. I keep it into the, in this pitcher with a lid and it never loses its strength. So this is really great stuff. You, I just cleaned it so it's nice and clean. Sometimes you get material that drops to the bottom and I clean it straining it through a strainer and a paper towel into another pitcher. The copper sulfate comes in this dry form. The mixture is one cup copper sulfate to one liter of water and you dissolve the copper sulfate very slowly so a little bit of it at a time into the water. I bought a lot. You don't need to buy that much when you find it. Buy it online and just buy the smallest amount they sell because you need a cup and, and this stuff never wears out. This is the power source. This is a variable power source and I have it set at 5 volts. I just leave it set there. This is the positive anode clip and this is the negative cathode clip. And the way we proceed is remove the lid of the copper sulfate. This is a piece of copper that I used to attract the metal off of the plates and you can see it's been building up for quite some time I've been etching quite a while with this. I drop it into the solution, copper sulfate, and attach the negative cathode to it. To get the plates etched, you have the little plate here. You need a nice shiny back and another piece of copper. I like to sand this just a little bit so that the connection between the plate and the anode is very strong, the positive charge. I'm going to put it on this plexiglass so I don't stick to the paper. And you take just basic packing tape, clear packing tape, and tape, oops, I did move the camera, tape this onto the back, I'm looking for scissors here, onto the back of the plate. So that these two things are really well connected. I'm, I, I've seen people who are very neat about this. I've decided you don't have to be particularly neat. Just have to have a really good connection here. So well I can't get it off the plate, off the plexiglass. Up, up. So there we go. We have our little bunny. Make sure it's all the way stuck to the edge. This is protected. I have this protected with tape as well because that would etch too once it's in the solution. And you drop it into the tank. Make sure it's covered completely by the copper, copper sulfate solution. Then you take the positive charge side and attach it here. I have a timer. I've got the timer set for 25 minutes. Lisa's drawings are very delicate and uh, I sometimes with mine, because I do a little bolder drawing, etch for about 30 minutes. But I'm gonna, this is the first one. We're gonna test with the smallest of the bunny plate. So I'm gonna go for 25 minutes. I'm going. Okay. Hi. <laughs> so here we go. We switch on the power and start the timer. And we'll be back in about 25 minutes. Okay? Hi, I just want to tell you a few more things. We're almost down to the 25 minutes. It's very important that the plate is parallel with the other piece of copper that's extracting the copper from the plate. 
So that, and it has to be a certain distance away from each other, but not too far. Uh, I wanted to tell you that the variable power source I bought came from Amazon.com, and it's reasonably priced. I think delivered it was around $50. You can always add more water to this solution if some evaporates out. It's, the copper sulfate stays in there, and it doesn't evaporate in the air. There are no noxious fumes with this system and it's very quiet because you don't have to have an exhaust fan going while you're etching. It's almost magical. So we're coming down to the wire, 18 seconds left, and we're going to let it beep and then go on to the removing of the hard ground. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. There we go, turned off the power, Turn off the beeper, remove this, and normally I would walk this over to the sink, but I've set this up here where I can clean it off. I've got a green scrubby, which won't scratch the copper at all, and you'll, you can see this, the round just starts flaking off of here, like that there. And it just comes right off, and I can see we have a really nice etch. Let's get it a little clean, and I'll sh show you. The uh, whiteout comes off pretty easily, too, from the action of the electricity. It loosens it up. Normally, if you get it into crevices, you might have to use a little bit of lacquer thinner, but... Usually it just scrap, it comes off with the scrubby very nicely. And once I've got this stuff off of here, I put it into a solution of vinegar and salt, which will clean the plate really nicely. And I hope you can see this. Can you see the bunny there? Beautiful. Okay, we're going to etch the rest of the plates and then we'll print some tests. All right? Thanks a lot. And I'm so excited. This is gorgeous. Lisa, we're doing a good job.